Gem City morning. <laughs> well, we're looking a little better up here, uh, so it's good. Thankfully, there was uh, decent weather on Friday night lights a couple days ago. If by decent, you like humidity, but still the kids were great. It was an incredible event, obviously fruitful for your Buckeyes. I guess the most you know, interesting thing that came out of it, or one of the most interesting things, there's some very interesting stuff that came out of it, is the quarterback situation. Danny Clark and Tate Martell were there, both class of 2017 commitments. Emery Jones is in the house, the hopeful 2018 commitment. What's up with Clark? Every person I spoke to said he looked better than Martell. I do understand that's probably not the forum for Martell, but... What's your vibe now? It's just kind of a curveball in the whole quarterback situation. Well, you know, if, if he threw the ball better, he threw the ball better. Uh, that's a good thing because I think he's going to be part of the class. You know, that's it's that simple. I, I just do not think that there's a uh, – I don't think they're going to ask him to gray shirt. And if they don't, I think he stays in the class. So him improving his uh, his passing – his accuracy was always a question, never any question about arm strength. Uh, too many times we saw a kid just not be as accurate as you wanted him to be. And if, and if, it, if uh, he was better, that's nothing but good news. Uh, still got the issue. I just don't know if he's got the mobility that um, to, to run the full offense. I just don't see it in him. But uh, throwing the ball better, that's a good thing. On the other side... Are you concerned that Martell didn't have a bang-up showing? I guess I'm not going to put too much stock into one event. Um, you know, I believe that the 717s tell us something. Uh, fans want to say, well, it's, shirt, it's uh, shorts and T-shirts. Yeah, but they're still out there doing the things that they would do on a football field, fully battered, padded up. So um, I don't – I'm not going to – Put too much stock in one event. It's that simple. Uh, that's just you, – you you wouldn't rate a player just on one game. So let's not uh, let's not change our opinion of him on one event. Yeah, Martel strikes me also as a guy who's going to do better with better players around him. He's used to that. He's been raised in a system where he's always had great talent around him. And I can understand how that could be an issue for some people, but – Guess what he's going to have around him if he comes to Ohio State. So I'm not sure that's much of a drawback. Real interesting recruitment going on is that of Jalen Harris. Harris, the 6'5 or 6'6 wide receiver out of Cleveland Heights. In almost any other class that Ohio State's ever had, I think he'd already be in the mix. But now when you hear they're only going to take two receivers or they're expected to, and we know Trevon Grimes and Tyjon Lindsay are – very likely to be in the class. Your vibe on Harris, who obviously took a tumble at Friday Night Lights, unfortunately suffered a concussion, had to leave early, but do you think there's room for him eventually? And what does that say about the class in general if an in-state guy of that caliber is in the mix? I, I, he's just taking his time, and he doesn't have it because we don't have room and we're filling up. I don't know how we're going to fit him in. Here's another thing, Dan. I just don't know. Considering we've done the last couple of years, I don't. I don't know if we need him. He's not better than Grimes, so there's no way we'd take him over Grimes if he wanted to commit now. I was just looking at the roster yesterday, and just to split in, we got seven guys, and the oldest one of them is a, other than Corey Smith, is a redshirt sophomore. So I just, you know, we're talking about Gibson. We're talking about Noah Brown. We're talking about Austin Mack. We're talking about Benjamin Victor. There's some real talent stacked up out there, and they're all young guys. So I don't know. I don't know where Harris fits into the mix, and we're we're just filling up. So it'd be interesting, you know, if we could take him, great. But I just don't see how we're going to be able to. 
That's incredible because he's a very good player. Uh, Michigan State's going to get a good one. Whoever's going to get him is going to get a pure spillage. Um, that's as good of Ohio spillage as you're going to get. I was looking at when I know when they were at 15, they only had four guys from Ohio in the class. So yes, they've gone to a national approach. I'm not saying I wouldn't do that myself, but it's unbelievable the guys even in Ohio who are going to be left out. Speaking of guys who won't be left out of the class. This is your first time on air since Chase Young signed up. You're high on him. You're by. Uh, ecstatic about that one. That's uh, that's a naked jaunt and verbal right there. That kid, he is – I was looking at, at – I think he's the best uh, weak side rush edge rusher in the class. I looked at last year's weak side and and I would say he would have been the best last year. He's a prototype. You look at this guy, he's everything you want in a uh, pass rusher. He's, he's got the length at 6'5", long arms. He's got the first step. He's got the motor. He's a really special athlete. I think he's a, a kid that could come in even with the depth we have and be an immediate impact player. He's going to be something special, and that's a huge get. And you want to impact the passing game in football these days. Quarterbacks, big receivers, pass rushers, and and defensive tackles that can uh, crush the pocket. Those are the guys that are priority priority recruits. Those are the guys that get drafted at the top of the NFL draft and less tackles. So that is that that's just such a key position and getting the best in the country, that's huge. Add in the fact that he comes from a football factory like DeMatha, and it was another example of Larry Johnson's prowess on the eastern seaboard, the D.C. area in particular. You're talking about getting, among others, Haskins, Dwayne Haskins, Keandre Jones, and Chase Young out of D.C. in a two-year stretch. Those were as good as football players that's come out of there in a decade. So very, very impressive. Another very impressive way to watch Young in action is there was some video posted by Akron Zip Buckeye on the site last night. So what was your specific evaluations of some guys getting to see them on, on video? Well, Chase Young was on there, and he's very impressive. The guy is just, he gives it everything he's got. I love the motor on this guy. These are one-on-ones, and he's already committed, you know. And I think, I don't remember, I didn't get a date on when those actually occurred, but, uh, <laughs> Still, the guy was going like uh, he was uncommitted. He he just I, – I think in his head he already knew where he was going, but just watching the guy come off the edge, uh, saw some good – he used good rip move. Uh, I was very impressed with, with what I saw out of him, uh, much less so with uh, Josh Myers. And the top defensive tackle I see in the country, Marvin Wilson, he consistently got stuffed in these drills. Uh, I think I remember Josh Myers actually stiffing him one time. So, you know, that's uh, that's some big stuff. I'm just glad to see Josh Myers continue to show up at these events. This is the second time that he's uh, not really performed that well, but this is how he gets better, Dan. You go, you compete, you try to learn to be a, a better football player. That's the one advantage that people do not seem to understand about these events. These one-on-ones matter. These are the same drills that they'll be doing shortly with pads on, getting ready for the season. This is important. This is basically practice. So I want to see this kid continue to show up and keep working and learn. He just doesn't do it in high school. He hasn't done it in high school. He's doing it now. It's just extra work. So that's the positive that comes out of it uh, for me as, as, as far as Josh Myers is concerned. He did not show a little well in this one, but, uh, you know, just keep working. That's, what, that's the one thing you can do. One thing we'd be remiss if we didn't discuss is the class of 2018 got its first commitment. Brian Sneed, running back out of Florida, committed at Friday Night Lights, had a chance to go back and watch his tape. What's your thoughts on uh, Sneed? Uh, he's good back. He's a good back. I don't think he's a great back. He's got good speed. He, I like how he, he hits the hole. He sees it, he goes. I don't like the guys that sit around and wait on a better option. He's, he's going to uh, pick his hole and he's going to go. 
and he goes hard. He's got a good-looking body on him. Uh, as I said, he's got good speed. It's not going to change my opinion that Jalen Gill's a must-have in the class, but it's good to have another solid back in the class. Sneed relishes contact. I will say that for a guy his size, he runs with a physical nature. There are also a couple plays of him blocking that are impressive, but it is clear that he does not have the top, top, top end speed. I'm not sure that's a prerequisite for greatness, but um, I would agree with you that Gill remains the must-get among those guys. I'm not sure Gill's an every-down back. When I see him, I don't look at a guy who's going to be able to add that much more to his frame, but we shall see. We appreciate Dwayne stopping by. Don't forget, today is the day that Urban Meyer takes the stage at Big Ten Media Days. Steve Hellwagon and Dave Biddle are there with bells on. We'll have complete coverage, so keep it locked in the butt nuts, people. Have a good one.